Well, just came here to advance auto parts. They get a machine, put the alternator on it, spins it up, and it tests all the internal components of the alternator and tests the AC ripple, voltage, and everything, and it passed with flying colors. So absolutely no noise. It sounded really nice, no bearing noise. And uh, it put out 14.8 uh, volts, I believe, was the test result. But make a long story short, for 20 bucks, cut myself a heck of a little alternator. So now I'm going to grind off this uh, part of the boss right here so that uh, I can uh, cobble it into the uh, application that I want to put it into. I was going to measure this right here, but then I realized uh, I really don't have to because I can see that basically they just ground it down to the point where it's flush with this uh, part of the flange here. So that's what I'll do on the new one. I keep saying grind, but I think I'm going to be better off with this cutoff wheel. Of course, this one's kind of worn down pretty far. Let's see if I've got a new one. All right, so I've ground that off now. So now this one's like the one that came out of there. Not bad. All right, I've got this mounted back up the way it was, and the alignment's not perfect. Ideally, I could see that this could stand to go back a little further that way. The only way that's going to happen is if I grind that further. Um, I think I'm going to leave it the way it is for now. Doesn't look like that belt's going to hit the fan blade. But the other problem is over here, this uh, tensioner uh, or adjustment bracket right here where it's going to bolt onto, it actually, that's too far back. All they were doing was pulling this like this and just slapping a bolt in there and forcing it over but I think what I want to do I think I can improve upon that if I use a longer bolt and put a spacer in here I like that idea better so let's see what I can come up with for a space okay here's the original well here's the bolt that I took out and there was a nut on it because I think they uh, actually didn't have a threaded hole on that other alternator now that I think of it so since this is a threaded hole on this one I don't need the nut really so what I want to do is get a spacer to go in here and then I'll have this bolt going from this side and thread into there like that all right I've got this uh, I don't even remember where I got this from this is my scrap junk draw whatever and it's the right diameter so it'll make a nice uh, little bushing or spacer if I cut it to the right length so that's what I'm gonna do all right, here's my little uh, my little spacer. Looks like this thing was solid brass. Well, anyways, it was scrap as far as I was concerned. So now I'm gonna put it in there. Oops, just realized I've gotta put a washer underneath the head of this bolt. It's not really working out too well. Well, this isn't working. I don't like this alignment the way it's working out. When I tighten everything down, that belt is precariously close to hitting the fan blade right there. And that's because of this whole alignment issue. You can see, I don't know if you can tell right dead on, but that whole alternator is out probably uh, three eighths to a half an inch too far forward. So what I want to do is I'm going to grind some more metal off of that mouth on the bottom. It's going to weaken it some, but uh, I'm going to hope that that's going to be okay just so I can get some more clearance here for safety. I don't want that uh, belt impinging on there. And, and the, you know, best case scenario, it only damages the belt. Worst case scenario is it uh, damages the alternator. All right, here's the hacksaw and what was left of my cutting wheel. <laughs> Guess I need to get some more of those when I go to the store. Anyways, uh, took about a quarter of an inch off, so. Now, I want to blow out all of that aluminum so it doesn't end up going into the alternator. Well, now I've got the alignment right where I want it. I don't even need the spacer in here anymore, but now I've got a new problem, which is now the belt rubs against this metal T that comes out of the bottom of the radiator. So, you can see it, but yeah, right there. It's rubbing right there. And uh, so that's not good. So apparently moving that back into perfect alignment is not the answer. Maybe if I put a spacer back in there on the back side, about half the thickness, I can 
maybe just cheat and get it in there. But the other problem is the alternator doesn't want to swing down enough to tighten it because it's now in the back here, it hits this boss that sticks out of the uh, block. Oh, I was able to shift this out enough so the belt would tighten to a good tension. So now my only problem is it's rubbing against this. Not hard, but lightly. So I'm going to shim this alternator back out a little bit. Taken the alternator bolt out about 10 times, I finally smartened up and hooked up my uh, ratchet, air ratchet. Well, I tell you, that shim didn't do anything. That washer I put in there really didn't help. And then when I moved it out even further, I noticed that this little bit of change way up here isn't going to help at all down here. So I think the solution here is maybe some sort of an idler pulley that would go here and push on it this way. Remember these mystery things I found in the toolbox? One of these might work. Essentially figure out a way to rig it up so that this kind of sits in here and pushes like that. That'll take it off of that. It's really rubbing kind of lightly on there, so for the time being, I'm going to leave it. Looks like this alternator is newer because this is a metric nut on here. I've added bonuses with this alternator. The plug is facing out, so instead of on the back side there, it's up here in the front. So it wasn't this connect. Oh, I took this off again because I decided to use this rubber cap that came on the wire that when they took the... Uh, alternator out of that vehicle we just cut the wire rather than go through the trouble of taking the thing off so I had to uh, cut the back of it because it had a small gauge wire going in there so now we got this heavier gauge one so I'm gonna squeeze that over there and that'll give me a little rain shield there we go snug as a bug in a rug all right I've hooked up the battery cable no fireworks that's a good sign <laughs> all right now ready for the first test which is when I turn on the ignition, my alternator idiot light should light. And it does. You can, I don't know if you can see it in the sunlight here, but my alternator idiot light is lit. So that's, that's a good sign. Now what's gonna happen is, when I start the engine, what's supposed to happen is, that light should go out. So let's see if we can't get it to start. Let's see if it'll start with no ether today. It's much warmer today. You can see that the light is on. Oops. I had forgotten to uh, turn my fuel back on. And also I had forgotten about this little hole here where it spews out the uh, fluid until it starts running. All right, so again, the light is on. All right, battery's a little low, so I'm going to give it just a little bit of ether, starting fluid. Okay. Now that light's supposed to go out once the alternator starts putting out voltage. Ammeter's not showing any charge. Alternator's spinning fine. Ooh, look at that smoke. 